this is a, a stained two by four cut six inches long. Okay, that is our substrate. That's what we're using. Let me do this. Oh, no, I should have done that backwards. So there is what we're using, okay? It's a uh, two by four cut to six inches long. So if you get an eight foot board, you can make 16 of these, okay? So the first thing that I wanna do is, I can't see my, hang on, let me lower, let me lower this a little bit because I cannot see what I'm doing and I like to be able to see and make sure that you guys can see because the only way I know is if to look up and look at my iPad. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, so after, I like to, um, and you can tell, I, I can't finish a sentence today, but I like to stain my entire board and then um, cut it so you can see my edges are raw. But that's okay because we're going to put a little gold on that. And uh, this is stained with a dark walnut stain. So I just brush it on, wipe it off, let it dry. Any stain that, hey, Julie, um, any stain that you like will work for this. We're actually going to put a little paint on the front of this. And I am going to use a palette knife for that process. So, because I want it, to, I don't want it to be brushed on. I want it to look a little, hey, Gloria, I want it to look a little, um, uh, just a little, Distressy kind of. So I'm going to put a little bit of white on my plate. I'm going to scooch this over and make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to my plate and I'm also going to add rustic. Thank you, Susan. My words, my brain is ready to shut down. It is so ready to just have like three days of sleep. I slept till 9 a.m. today. That's crazy. This is called forest moss. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my plate. Now I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm gonna use my palette knife. And we're gonna use, oh, that one bent. Let's use a different palette knife. Let's use this one. I wanna make sure it's straight, nice and straight. I'm gonna use the back side of my palette knife. So the back, the flat back. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna tap my palette knife into that white paint and just get some on the back of my knife. Can you see that now? <laughs> and then I'm just gonna start at the top and lightly add that white and I'm going to go into the green I tap in a little bit of the green on the back of the palette knife and we're just going to come in and just go back and forth a little bit of white now this uh, piece of wood is kind of textury um, or it's got some uh, rust roughness to it so it helps with the um, rusticity of the, <laughs> of the uh, paint. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, adding in green and white until, until I like it. So I'm gonna add a little more green just on the back of that knife so you can see just on the back. And we'll add, I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I do want some of the wood to show. Let's go into the whites. This is a really fun technique. And so we're gonna come right back over with a little bit of that white. And I think we're gonna get a little tiny bit of green right there. All right, I'm kind of digging that. I like the way that looks. All right, so now I'm just gonna wipe that off clean off that palette knife and I'm gonna use, so it's really kind of pretty and rustic. I got some of that wood showing through so it'll be really kind of cool. So I'm gonna take a minute now and I'm just gonna use my heat gun 
to, yeah, you could totally do this technique on canvas. You do want to make sure, Rennie, really, that your canvas is tight because if there's any dip in your canvas at all, it's going to be a little difficult to get this technique right. But just tighten it up by spraying the back and uh, let it dry and it should tighten up. So I'm going to dry this with my heat gun so we can keep on painting. Hey, Carol. I'm gonna get this dry. It might take a second because I got a pretty good coat of paint on here. I don't want to heat it up too much. So we're just gonna let it dry. Hey, Kathy. My hands are cold, so I'm gonna use my heat gun on my hands too. Hey Kelly, hey Judy, hello Mara, Myrna, sorry, I barely read that. Thank you Lori. Got a few wet spots right here. I'm gonna turn this down just a little. I don't wanna like fry the paint, but we do want it to get dry. It's a little thicker coverage than normal, so it might take an extra second. Hey, Anne. Uh, no, Kathy, I won't be offering that pumpkin as a kid. I, we can literally only do um, kits every so often uh, because we're a sm very small business. We're old and we're tired and it takes a lot. Um, to do that, but it was really simple, Kathy. If you watch the replay on the on this page, um, it's really an easy pumpkin to do. And that curly glass that I used, you can find on Etsy. All right, I think it might be dry. It's kind of hot, so it's hard to tell. You can totally use a hair dryer, Dodie. Absolutely, you can. As a matter of fact, I used a hairdryer for a very, very long time before I finally broke down and bought a heat gun because I'm cheap that way. <laughs> I was like, I got an extra hairdryer, so I'm not buying one till I kill my hairdryer. So I think we're done. It feels dry. just wanted to cool off just a little bit. And the pumpkin is on this page. So uh, it's on my Art Shattered page. You're just gonna probably have to scroll back about a week, because I think we did that. Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, ladies, but I think we did that last Wednesday. So you'll have to scroll back to last Wednesday to find that, all right? And I think I called it White Pumpkin, so you might see that. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm trying to decide if I want to freehand my pumpkin. Do I trust myself at this point? Because I'm kind of tired. Kind of tired. So I don't think I'm going to trust myself. But look, this is my stem that I'm going to be using. It is so spectacular. And it. I'm going to have it off of my... I'm going to have to glue it down. But I'm going to have it sticking up off of my piece of wood. Just like this. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is hold this in place and sketch a little pumpkin-y right around it. So I can sketch, come on, be steel. That way I get it right. So let's do our middle, which is really just kind of an egg shape. So let's sketch our little egg. And I'll show you on paper kind of how I come up with these. Um, let me get this sketched out first. And then we'll come back up and we'll come up and around and go all the way to the edge there. And the same thing here. We'll come up and around and them down. Okay, so now I know that my stem is going to fit really nicely right in to that pumpkin. So literally, to sketch a pumpkin, all you need to do is, and you can practice on paper, you want to make like an egg shape. You want it to be a little skinnier at the top and a little 
fatter at the bottom. So you're gonna make a little egg, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect either, because I don't know about you, but I've never seen a perfect pumpkin, and I almost always go, and when I buy pumpkins, I like to buy the ugliest pumpkin in the pumpkin patch, all right? So now you're gonna start in the center at the top, and you're gonna come up higher than your original and just come back around and make another little hump. So it's like a backward C. Then you'll come over here again and you'll make a forward C, just like that. So it's an egg, a backward C and a forward C and you could totally like make them fat and short and squatty like this and just make it really fat and squatty. It's pretty much the same technique, no matter how big or small your pumpkin is. You could even come up and add another little hump to it if you wanted to. So you could add as many sections as you want, uh, but it's gonna be always kind of that basic shape, okay? Hope that helps. I'm gonna toss this aside, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be doing something a little different, and we're gonna be using honey brown for our, our the main color of our pumpkin. I'm gonna put a little bit of that honey brown on my palette right here. Whoa, that's gross. That was oily. Hey, Devin. Shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. Ugh. Let's try that again. I'm gonna scooch over. I don't want that oily stuff. Let's get it right here. So we're gonna put a little bit of that honey brown, which is kind of an orangey brown. See that? Almost a flat terracotta color. Uh, well, I don't think it's on my end, Tara. I have brand new internet, and I did an internet uh, check before we started, and my internet is like off the chain fast, so it might just be a Facebook thing because they've been cuckoo lately, and uh, but I have the best internet in town now. Okay, our second color I'm going to use is Antique Gold, and that's by Americana. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my plate as well. That's a nice yellowy color, really pretty. And lastly, we're gonna use our Splendid Gold, which is a metallic paint, okay? It's Anita's, but any metallic gold will work. Any metallic, ugh, any metallic gold will work. You don't have to have the exact same colors as me, all right? So we're gonna start with that, and I'm gonna just grab a little brush. Let's see, I'll get this one. This is like a, it doesn't have, oh, it does. It is a 3 8 inch angle brush, but use whatever you have, whatever you're comfortable with. There is absolutely no brush that's like, this is the brush you have to have, okay? So just use whatever you have and what you feel comfortable using. I'm gonna start with, oh, I got white here too. We're, we are gonna use a little white. So we're gonna take our brush into that honey brown. Let me turn my names around so I don't say the wrong thing. So this is that honey brown and I'm just gonna start with doing that main color of my pumpkin in that honey brown. All right, so let's get that on our little pumpkin. I'm gonna come, I didn't really sketch all the way down to the bottom of my wood, but I'm gonna pull that down so that he's sitting at the bottom. And let's go back up, fill in that middle. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the outside sections as well, okay? So we're gonna come up here. I'm gonna come around my tracer line or my sketch line on both ends. And just come up and fill in that pumpkin. Now 
This is a cute, this be cute for a little gift. Just a little piece of wood. So cute. All right, let's do the other side. I'm just going to start at the top. I'm going to make sure I cover up my pencil where I sketched it on. We'll come down at the bottom. Make sure we go all the way. Let me come down a little on this side. I don't want any floating. Come down. And there we go. Okay, so this is what I like to call a ground coat. This is just your start, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush and I'm gonna hit this with my dryer again just to get this layer of paint dry. Actually, what you can do is if you're working on this at home, just go pour yourself a glass of tea, glass of red coffee, something like that. By the time you come back, it'll probably be dry. I'm just gonna hit this for 10 seconds with my heat gun, blow dryer, whatever you wanna use. Make sure it's nice and dry, because we're gonna come back and do another coat and add in our other colors. So, let me just wipe that off. It's not fully clean. Uh, that commercial, Zest commercial, just popped into my head when I said it's not fully clean. Because remember how it went? Does anybody remember how it goes? It's not fully clean unless it's zestfully clean. I know. Okay. No more singing. Promise. Okay. So I'm going to start in the middle. Carol's got some red coffee right now. So I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm just going to come in and add... A little bit of that same color, the honey brown. Uh, and I'm just gonna work on the one side right now, on that left side. I'm gonna grab up a little bit of that antique gold. And we're just gonna swoosh some of that in on that one side. And I'm gonna go back into my honey brown again. We're gonna do the right side. And I'm gonna grab a little white. And I'm going to swoosh some of that white on the right side. All right. I'm going to get a little more of that antique gold. I'm going to wipe it off. I'm going to get a tiny bit of the white and just add that white right there. Okay. I'm just kind of futzing, y'all. I'm just... Ma doing it, make painting until I like it. Red coffee is red wine or red, red wine in a coffee cup. All right, so next I'm going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing pretty much to this side. Just come on in and re wet your original color. I'm going to offload the excess, grab up that. Um, antique gold. Just kind of blend it in. We'll grab a little white. We're going to bring that on the outside. I'm not trying to be perfect. I just want to have a cute little pumpkin because we're going to add some gold to this as well. Whoops, I didn't want that. I want, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm losing my mind. We'll get a tiny bit of white. I do want to have a little more of that white right here. All right, so far, so good. Becky, I'm jelly. Huckleberry vodka. Well, Kathy, that sounds fantastical. Oh, was it? I thought it was zest, Wendy. May I could be wrong, because I have been wrong before. <laughs> I've been around before. So let's get our second coat on this left section. Just wipe off the excess because we don't want to rinse. We want all that other dirty paint in there. So I'm going to go in with my antique gold and we'll just pop on a little bit of that gold on the left side. Wipe off the excess, grab a little bit of that white, smoosh it into your brush a little, 
and we'll hit right on the edge. Blend it in with the wet colors that you already put on there. All right, now I'm gonna come back with a little bit of maybe this color, the honey brown, and just kind of fill in where I kind of made a little gap. Just futzing. I like to futz till I like it, and that's what you should do too. All right, so real quick, I think what I'm gonna do as well I'm trying to decide, because this is gonna go right in. Oops, I just threw my paintbrush on the ground. This is gonna go right in here. Should we add a leaf or just some curlies? Let's just add some curlies. So I'm gonna take a little bit um, of avocado. I'm gonna squirt a little bit of that right here not much because we just need this teeny teeny little smidgy let me see if i have a brush that i want i want a liner brush which is kind of just like an eyelash brush um we're gonna make a tiny little skirt. so this this is the tiniest little baby brush look at it it's just um, the tiniest little liner brush. I'm gonna get it wet, and I wanna put some water in that green to make it kind of runny because it's going to uh, go on and uh, be a curly cue better if it has a little bit of juice to it. Yay, Lou Ann, you'll have to teach me how to do that because I don't know. Thank you, Amy, how are you, love? So I'm gonna just swirl my brush around in that paint. And I'm gonna try not to get my hand in the icky. Let me grab another piece. I'm gonna just put that right here. And I know that my, my stem is gonna go here. So let's just come out from that stem and make a little curly. Let me go over it again. It was a little light but we can hit it with our pen as well. Give it a little oomph. And I think I'm gonna take a little bit of white and just hit it in a couple of spots just to give it a little 3D effect. All right, I'm digging that. That's enough, we don't need it. We don't need more because I am going to dry this up and then we're gonna add a little gold, okay? Let me dry this. Oh, too much. Bourbon slushy? What? Y'all are so adventurous. Adventurous. All right, let me make sure. I got a little wet spot right there, so I'm gonna dry that up a little. All right, now I'm gonna take my brush. I'm gonna clean all this goo goo out, all the uh, colors, rinse it up really good. And I'm gonna offload some of that water. And I'm gonna take my splendid gold. I got way too much, y'all. That's so wasteful. I'm gonna scoop that back in. Um, I'm gonna take some of this splendid gold, which is kind of translucent, because if you, if you brush it across the plate, you can see that it's not as opaque as some of these other colors. It's a little sheer. So it's not gonna, dis it's not gonna like cover up our color as much as it's just going to add a little extra pizzazz. So I'm gonna take that gold, and I'm just gonna brush some of that gold on to the left side of my pumpkin and on the left side of this section. That is so much gold on my plate. Just to give it that little bit of metallic punch. Just, just a little. All right. Kind of digging that. I might even add a little bit. I'm gonna go 
put it on the side of my brush. I'm just gonna add a little to the sides. And I really wanna kinda of paint the top with the gold. Let's do that. Because that's gonna show. So we'll just give it a little bit of gold on the top as well. I'd love to gift this to somebody, but I'm not sure I'll be able to ship it with the stem hanging off. So um, we'll figure out something. My mom will be like, uh, excuse me. You're supposed to give that to me. Cause she didn't get one of my last pumpkins. She was not pleased. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit here. Just wherever you like it. And I'm kind of digging that. I wanna dry it so that we can um, do a little um, <gasps> hot apple pie. Oh my gosh, y'all are killing me. Give it to mom. Yes, Barbara, I think I probably will have to do that. She didn't get one of my last ones. Let me dry this metallic, it won't take much. I do, Amy, I do owe her a pumpkin. Oh, Devin, that's a great idea. If mom doesn't want it, I could totally do that. Let's get that dry a little bit. I think that's good and dry. We'll let that cool for a second. And before we uh, add our glass and all, I'm gonna grab one of my little markers. That's two, that's not the one I want. That's not the one I want. That one might be, let's see if it works. Uh, where are all my good stuff? Where's all the good stuff? Where's all the good stuff? There we go. So, if you follow me, you know that I love using, that's right, Ann, you know that I love using these graphic markers. I buy these from Hobby Lobby. Um, it's a Master's Touch brand, and it's just an illustration marker, and it's a point, this one's an 03, and it just gives you a little fine line detail. I like to use these because I have a little arthritis in my hands, and it's really hard for me to do fine lines with paint and a paintbrush. But you can totally do that if you do not have the Arthur. And I'm gonna just use my little liner and I'm gonna kinda go around my pumpkin with short, quick strokes. to just kind of help define the uh, sections. So we're just short, less than an inch, messy, fun strokes. So you can see how that just kind of defines the sections, roll tide. It kind of helps define the sections of that. Two before I understand, oh, that's true. Yeah, we better check with Mama first, Cheryl. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, we are gonna add some other things, but I think if I'm gonna add that stem, I'm gonna need a little assistance keeping it in place. Um, I think while it dries, I will do what uh, somebody just suggested and just keep another block under there. But for now, I am going to find the back side. That's the back. And I am going to put a little bit of glue on that bottom inch and a half or so. So I'm just gonna add some glue. Now this is Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. I usually buy it in little bottles, but they had these cute little glue pens and I couldn't resist, so I just got a couple because I just wanted them, <laughs> right? I was just like, that's so cute. So we're gonna add that, a little bit of glue, and it, that'll help that start to dry as while we work on uh, mixing our resin. So I'm gonna tuck it right in where it should be, and that'll hold it up. Oh, look at that, that's so cute. Can you see it? Let me scooch it down. I had it too hot, didn't I? Look how cute that's gonna be, y'all. Oh my goodness, look how cute. I love that the stem is sticking up higher 
than the um, wood itself. Um, I usually use the pens that I use, Gail. I usually use a 0.3 or a 0.5, or uh, is it 0.3? Uh, yeah, a 0.3 or a 0.5. Those are my two favorite cup, uh, sizes. So we're going to let that sit. I'm going to scoot it over just a wee and let that sit while we mix resin. Now, after we mix our, actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of gold glass, just maybe right here in a couple of spots, not much. And then I think we're going to add a little bit of this, these gold seed beads. So we're going to just kind of play it by ear and see uh, what happens. I'm going to scooch it down just a little so you can kind of see what we got going on. All right, so I want to use just a few nuggets of the fire glass. And I want small nuggets because this is a small piece, so I don't want it, really want any great big pieces. So I'm going to pick through and just find some little babies because that is too big. So I'm gonna find a few little baby pieces. And we're gonna add them right up next to our stem and just kind of bring some of those little nuggets down and around our pumpkin. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna add, when we resin, I think we're gonna add some seed beads. Or the, and they were on sale too, Polly. I know, I literally went to Hobby Lobby today too because we were running short of beads for our bubble bag. So I went to and bought a ton of uh, seed beads and stuff from them because when they're on sale, it's just hard to resist. So let me just add a couple of nugs. I don't wanna get too crazy. Uh, and I hate picking and choosing. I hate like sitting here and picking out little pieces, but I feel like I need to we'll add one right there. And I'm gonna add just a couple at the top of this side. I need a curvy one. I don't like that. Let's see, hang on. Being a little nitpicky, but you know how it is sometimes. I need to stop. I'm getting on my own nerves. All right, I think I'm kind of happy with that. I don't really want a ton because I do want to use some seed beads. And so we're going to stick with that. And I know, Julie. Stop that then. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some resin. I don't have gloves. They stole my gloves in the back. Let me see if I have a pair here. I do. Steal it out of this kit. I'm gonna get in tr trouble for that. Um, hang on. My seat is bugging me. I don't know what is wrong with my stool. So we're gonna mix up, we don't need a whole lot of glass. I mean, a whole lot of resin, okay? Just a tiny, tiny bit. Thank you, Catherine. So I think I'm just gonna mix up, I'm gonna mix up a half an ounce. I don't even think it's gonna take a half an ounce. And I didn't send one, Becky, because six o'clock snuck up on me. And um, I, yeah, I was late and I just went live. I realized that I was supposed to go live about two minutes before, <laughs> right, Julie? Two minutes before I went live. All right, so before I do that side, I'm gonna get a little cup. I'm gonna mark it with my pen. So I'm gonna make a quarter ounce of hardener and a quarter ounce of resin, so I'm gonna mark my cup because once you get the liquid in there, it's you kind of lose those little lines. So let's get that on there. Yeah, I didn't send one, that's why. I forgot, I forgot it was even time to go live. Time got away from me. I didn't even know what was happening. All right, I need to keep my colors separate. Let me put them over here so I can remember what we used 
Uh, okay. Huh. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is pour a little bit. Oh my gosh, I don't have hardly any. Hopefully I have a quarter ounce. I need to refresh my bottles. We're gonna use a quarter ounce of hardener. That might take three days for it to come down. Hang on. Hardener, hardener, hardener. I might have to call in reinforcements. Hmm. I hear somebody, so hang on, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, this is gonna take three days. And he filled up the bottom yet. As soon as whoever's in the restroom comes out, I'll have them bring me a small kit. Yeah, this is bad. This might take 20 minutes. Right? Right, Sherry? I agree. It's super, super cute. I love the stem sticking way up. Hopefully, we won't break that off. Oh, we're almost there, y'all. I don't know if we're going to make it, but we're really close. Yeah, I think we're giving up on that bottle. We're going to use it or lose it. All right. Normally when they're this low, I turn them upside down so that I get every little luscious drop out of the resin, but this is coming. It's almost there, y'all, promise. It's almost there. A little bit more. Okay, okay, couple more drops. Oh, it's there, la la la. Okay, so that is uh, the hardener, so it comes two bottles to a kit. Um, so you get resin and hardener. That was our hardener. So now we have resin, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pour a quarter ounce so that we have a half ounce total of our mixture. So let's see what happens. Who's in the bathroom? Can you bring me out of our little uh, resin supply, the, one of the little kits that's like this, the 16 ounce? Uh -huh. I literally just used the last droplets. Thank you. All right, so we have our half ounce of resin mixture. So we're gonna stir this for three minutes, okay? Let's see, let me stir. That's what I do too, Barbara, but we have used up almost every drop of resin we have in this building, except for the baby bottles. And uh, so I'm gonna start stirring, Catherine. So I'm just having to make do with what I have for now. Can I add resin to a piece that has dried? Is it, yes, you can do that. Um, if it's been a while, Renee, you might wanna take some a light sandpaper and just scuff up the flat parts of it a little bit and then clean all that dust off before you um, before you add another thin coat of resin. That way you can make sure it sticks. That's what Art Resin recommends because once it's cured after 72 hours, sometimes it doesn't want to stick. It makes a mess. Thank you. You can just set it down. I'm not gonna need it until later. Thank you. Perfect, just wherever. So we're gonna stir this for three minutes. Stir, stir, scrape, scrape, stir, stir. Super excited. I wanna move this off of it just a little so you can kinda see. Oh, it's gonna be so cute. We're gonna add some seed beads too. Uh, Tammy says she's waiting to, wanting to order her supply list. If you registered for the Christmas tree challenge, if that's what you're talking about, if you registered for that, the supply list was emailed to you uh, right after, like within a minute or so after you registered. So you might want to check your spam um, and see, because nine times out of ten, if you don't get it, that's where it's at. So check your spam. So we're stirring, mix that resin. You gotta do it for three minutes, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. 
They're just sitting. The only one I glued, Jennifer, is this long piece because it's hanging off of my wood and I wanna make sure it stays there. And I'm also supporting it with this other piece of wood. But the other glass that I laid here, it's just laying there. No glue needed. So we're stirring and we're gonna stir some more until Catherine tells us to stop. Stir, stir. And you're gonna watch these colors really pop once the resin goes on. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine says time. And we're just gonna scrape one more time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my little popsicle stick and I'm gonna drizzle that resin. This is way too much. I'm gonna drizzle that resin right over my glass first because I do wanna make sure that my glass is stuck down. So we're gonna use that first. That metallic is really popping now. We'll go over here and do these couple little nuggets. Yeah, just wipe them out. If you wanna reuse your little cup, just wipe it out um, with a paper towel. Throw that paper towel away and then um, you can use like an alcohol wipe, like, um, just a wipe, an alcohol wipe. We have one of our members who sells uh, artist wipes and I love her wipes. Um, Burt Mac, is, she has a Facebook page where she sells them. Um, but yeah, you can just wipe it out and reuse it. I'm not very good at that. All right, now I'm just going to apply the resin to the rest of my piece of wood. And I really wanna make sure that it is on this piece. And I'm just gonna barely add some to the very top of my stem that's really long. I don't wanna flood it because I don't want it dripping over the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna add and spread out on the rest. And we got, oh my gosh, we probably have half of our resin left. We only needed half of that. So if you mix up a quarter ounce, you can probably do two or three of these. So do a bunch and then mix up some resin and, whoop, and do and resin them all at the same time. All right, let me see, pull that upwards. All right, we literally have at least that much left, okay? The wood does suck up the resin a little bit, Lisa. Um, I did put paint on it. It is stained, so that helps seal. And I did put some paint on the very top, so that will help as well. So it won't be too terrible bad, but if your wood is sealed with paint and or stain, it does help with that's uh, not happening. So I'm just gonna make sure, I'm gonna run my finger down that stem a little, and make sure we're not going over the edge. All right, I'm gonna wipe that off. And I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna grab my heat gun, and I'm gonna pop our bubbles. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, if you're trying to do these pieces, and you don't have a heat gun. The heat gun I have came from Amazon. It was like $20. Um, it's called a Seek One. But if you don't have a heat gun, you can um, use a blow dryer. The thing you want is low air, so you want it on the lowest air setting and the highest heat setting, okay? I just did the top. Kathy, I, just, I did the rest of the block, but only on the top. So I'm gonna use my heat gun to pop any of those bubbles. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you're working on wood, you're not gonna get all those bubbles popped, okay? Because wood is breathable. Wood breathes, it's got air in it. 
And so um, it's going to be breathing and air is going to be popping in and out of that wood. So there's no way you're going to get all, I got a drip. I like it. There's no way you're going to get all of those bubbles out. So if you cannot live with the bubbles, then you probably shouldn't work on wood. So I'm going to just get that drip off. I don't want it going over my edge. That side's fine. And I really think, oh, this is so cute. I'm going to open my beads. These are, I got these at Hobby Lobby on clearance. They are called Mayuki Silver Lined Light Gold. They're so pretty, but you could use whatever gold seed beads make your heart happy. Let me open this with my... Y'all, I have like half of my resin left. That makes me sad because I don't have anything else to resin. And I'm like in a panic now thinking, I cannot waste that resin. Well, I think this is a screw top. That's even better. Okay, so I like to pour my beads in a little baby cup because I am a spiller. And I don't want to have, I don't want to dump my whole tube of beads onto my um, piece. So I'm just going to dump a little bit. We'll set, I'll hold this in my hand. I'll set it right there. And then I'm going to sprinkle these beads wherever I decide I want them. So I'm going to, oh, hang on, got more drippage. I got a little too much resin. So you could probably do, with a half an ounce, you could probably do two or three, maybe even four depending on your coverage. All right, so I am gonna just sprinkle some of these beads right along the edge, just however many you want. I'll just fill that in a little. I'm just gonna add to my heart's content. A little bit on top of that glass, a little bit coming around. And maybe, let me scoot that over. I have to be careful of that stem. And maybe just a few right there. I think I want a little bit more. Put the top on, because I'm dangerous. Dangerous. And don't worry if you're tapping them in and they go crazy and go somewhere you don't want them. Because you can always use a toothpick or something to wrangle those suckers back in. Let's put it right there. I like this little tool that my girlfriend Lulu gave me. Yeah. I've never put my hooks on before, but this doesn't need a hook. This can this is a little shelf sitter. Alright. So I'm just gonna kind of scooch my little beads over um to where um I want them. If any that like went crazy and went where I didn't want them to go. And I'm gonna wipe that off. I am so big in this. This is so pretty. I hope my stem stays. I wanna hold it up a little bit and show you. So let me see if I can do this without getting myself into a pickle. Let me see, Let's see if it holds. Oh, <gasps> look y'all, O-M-G. Look at that, can you see it? Oh, let's put it in the middle of a white place. Look how cute, that is so cute. Look at the stem, I wanna kinda hold it up. I'm afraid to, but I'm gonna pull my camera, I'm gonna move this away from my chesty, and I'm gonna hold this camera up just a little. Let's, oh gosh, hang on, hang on y'all. Hold on, the airplane is taking off. Look how red my cheeks are. Oh, let me flip the camera back. Okay, I'm gonna try to turn this up and show you. Oh, look, y'all, how pretty is that? Look, I'm gonna see if I can do it, hang on. Look, look at the stem. Oh, goodness, look at this stem. That is so cute. I am digging it. Mm -hmm. 